Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at an extremely important type of series called power series. In a nutshell, a power series is basically a never-ending polynomial, or a polynomial with infinite degree. You keep on adding higher and higher order terms forever, and if you stop at the nth term, you get an n-degree polynomial. All of the following are examples of power series. A power series is any series of the form sigma sum c sub n times x to the power n, where the c sub n can be any real numbers, and we call them coefficients. Heh, <laughs> I guess you could say this formula sums up all the examples of power series. Sorry, I'll stop. Actually, power series can look a little different than what I've shown. They can be what we call centered at different points. What I've shown so far are power series centered at zero, but you can center them about any real number you want by doing a translation to the variable x. So all of the following are also power series, just centered at different numbers, which we'll call a. Okay, well, one of the main things we always want to know about any series is does it converge or does it diverge? Well, in the case of power series, the answer depends on the value of x. Plugging in different values of x will give you different series, some of which converge and others which diverge. I guess in a sense you could say a power series isn't truly a standalone series, rather it is a template for a series, and you obtain an actual concrete series once you plug in a value for x. So what values of x give us convergent series, and what values don't? Well, for starters, it's pretty clear that any power series has to converge at its center point. If I plug in a for the value of x, all of the terms of the series become zero, except the initial term. But what about other values of x besides the center point? It turns out that for any power series, the set of x values for which it converges is always an interval centered at the power series center point a. This interval is called the interval of convergence of the power series. Since the interval of convergence is always centered at the number a, we call the distance between a and either endpoint of the interval the radius of convergence, and denote it with the letter r. Thus, the endpoints of any power series are a minus r and a plus r. The exact value of r is determined by the coefficient c sub n of your power series. Change the coefficients, and you change the radius. In fact, it turns out the radius can even be infinite or zero, again, depending on the exact values of the coefficients. R equals infinity means the interval of convergence is the entire real number line, from negative infinity to positive infinity. R equals zero means the interval of convergence only contains one single point, the center point A, at which any power series always converges. But for the most part, we'll be looking at series whose radius is both positive and finite. All right, but how do we actually compute the radius of convergence? We know it depends on the coefficient c sub n, but how do we derive the exact value of the radius from them? The answer is the ratio test. It turns out the ratio test works very, very well on power series, which should make some sense because, if you remember what I said last video, the ratio test tends to work well on series whose terms involve exponentials and factorials. And since power series always contain a factor raised to the power n, the ratio test looks very inviting. Actually, there's one important point I need to make clear about the interval of convergence before going on. I've been representing the interval of convergence so far as an open interval from a minus r to a plus r, but really, the endpoints of the interval of convergence don't have to be open. They could be closed, or even half open or half closed. Again, it all depends on the coefficient c sub n. The ratio test gives us a way to find what the endpoints of the interval of convergence are, but it cannot tell us whether a given endpoint should be included as part of the interval or not. To decide that, we have to use a test other than the ratio test. 